Hello and welcome to News Click. I am Paranjoy Goha Thakurta. The Amadmi Party has both the Indian National Congress and the Bharatiya Janata Party got something wrong in their understanding of the working of the Aam Aadmi Party led by the Chief Minister of Delhi, Arvind Kejriwal. This is a question several political analysts are asking. Uh, other than the Bharti Janta Party and the Indian National Congress, the Aam Aadmi Party happens to be the only political party in India which is in power in two states, assuming you want to describe Delhi as a state. Be that as it may, Arvind Kejriwal is a polarizing personality. The, those affiliated to, to the Congress love to describe him as the B team, his, he and his party as the B team of the BJP. So to discuss this and related issues, I have with me all the way from the United Kingdom, a young political analyst, Keshav Guha. He's been writing regularly on politics for NDTV.com. He, he studied history and politics in Harvard, grew up in Bengaluru, has written a novel, a work of fiction in 2019 called Accidental Magic, published by Harper Collins. Thank you so much, Keshav, for being with us, uh, for being with the viewers of NewsClick. On the 26th of August, you wrote a in your column in NDTV, that both the Congress and the BJP failed to understand Arvind Kejriwal. If you can summarize your views of what you wrote in that article, and then I'd like to segment our conversation into a few parts. We, we talk a little bit about whether the Ahmadbi party is really like the BJP's B team or aspires to be the Congress's A team. We'll look at the ideology or the lack of ideology or the absence of ideology of the Aam Aadmi Party and, and, and look ahead a little bit about its future as it aspires to be an important player in the forthcoming assembly elections in Gujarat. So let's start with you summarizing some of the main points you made in what you wrote. When I said that the Congress and the BJP fail or struggle to understand this is what I meant. So if you, you have to go back to the origins of AAP. So the Ahmadi Party is a descendant of the 2011-2012 India Against Corruption movement. Now, the, the IAC was one of the really major factors that helped to delegitimize and eventually bring down the UPA government of uh, the Gandhis and Manmohan Singh. And that legacy is important. The origin story is important because it's always been the view of people within the Congress that IAC was not some autonomous civil society movement that just rose up from the ground. Because the question or, they or, or a spontaneous movement. Exactly, that's right. It's not, was not spontaneous. Because the question they always ask is, where did all these people come from? How did you fill Ramdila Meda? People in Delhi have not heard of Anna. Not, not everybody has heard of Anna Azari. How do you organize this? And the answer that they give at least in private, it's difficult for them to prove, is that all this happened with the connivance of the BJP and RSS. And they provided the organization, they provided the crowd. Now they can't prove it. But, no, but the, what can be proved is what you've written in your article. Yes. There are several people yes. who are today with the BJP who are yes. quite active in the yes. India Against Corruption yes. movement. So Jeff, I, 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 named, I, named, uh, uh, I, I just named four. You can elaborate on all of them. Yes. Yes. General V.K. Singh, former yes. chief of the Indian Army, who is now a minister of state. We look at Kiran Bedi, went on to become the governor of Puducherry. Anupam Kher, well-known actor. And of course, Baba Ramdev, who allegedly wore a sari and, and disappeared in the, in the middle of the night. Yes, please continue. Yeah, no, that, that, that's that's exactly right, and 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 so uh, and Baba Ramdev, of course, brought with him his 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 followers as well, and yeah, one of the things I say in the article is if you if you look at uh, the twenty fifteen Delhi elections, it was a contest between two alumni of India against corruption, Arvind Kejriwal and Kiran Bedi. So now, what I say in the article is that even if this is true, now I don't know if this is true, 
I don't know if you know it's true, but even if it is true that there was BJP RSS involvement in India against corruption, it doesn't mean that AAP is the B team of the BJP. Because as I say, since from 1947 till 2014, the Congress was a dominant pole of Indian politics, more dominant at some times than at others, perhaps. But by and large, the Congress was the only true pan-India party. You know, before 2014, the BJP was had almost no presence in several states. In fact, it was thought that the BJP could not win an overall majority because in the south and the east of the country, it didn't have a strong enough presence. Now, of course, the BJP is, is an active, organized, energetic party, even in states like Kerala and Tamil Nadu. But that was not necessarily the case 10 years ago. Odisha, West Bengal, the, the way they've done since then, we, you know, we, it wasn't the case 10 years ago. So the Congress was a dominant poll from 1947 onwards. And what that has meant in practice is all kinds of people have entered into partnerships, informal, formal, in order to take on the Congress. Left and right, the communists and the BJP have worked together in 1989, uh, where they had a kind of informal seat sharing alliance. And again in 2008, uh, after the nuclear... And, and, and Keshav, again, I'm interrupting you. In your own article, you go back further in time. You yes. go, go back to the 70s. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. When, when, okay, Jaya Prakash Narayan, Babu Jagjeevan yes. Ram, you know, exactly. not to mention Jyoti Basu and Indrajit Gupta of the left or Prakash exactly. Karat. Exactly. And of course, yes. you had even earlier, yes. Ram Raj and Raj Gopalachari at yes. different yes. points of time to oppose yes. the yes. Congress. Yes, yes. Exactly. And I think that, you know, in, in 67, uh, there was a let, the, the opposition was divided. And there was, after that, there was a view that if we're divided, we lose to the, we, we allow the Congress to win even when they're unpopular. And so as a result, yes, I mean, um, Rajkopalachari has, you know, was, was a, a good example of someone who was, was willing to enter into alliances with people whom he ideologically opposed to fight the Congress. And so I said, look, the fact that Arun Kejriwal may have been on the same side as the BJP once, that's because they had a common enemy, the Congress. It doesn't mean that it's because they share a common ideology or that they'll always be together or that they're working together today. And I just want to uh, just summarize the other, the other argument of the article, which is to do with how the BJP fails to understand. Ah. And that is to do with, uh, essentially what I say there is, the BJP has spent the last decade expanding across India. And partly they've offered a program, you know, a program of nationalism, of Hindutva, of welfareism, of the charismatic leadership of the prime minister. But they've also employed what I call negative rebranding tactics against the other parties. So look, if you think of parties as brands, they 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 have their own image that they, that they would like to, uh, you know, to spread. And conversely, the opposition is going to try to rebrand them in a different way. So the BJP, I said, has three main tactics, which I use, I call it their rebranding toolkit, which are firstly to uh, brand the party as either the party, a party of the Muslims or a party of some specific or, or a party that appeases the Muslims. Yes, yes exactly. But also or, or a party of a specific caste group that's favoring a specific caste group. So for example, in Telangana, they accuse the, uh, the ruling TRS of, 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 of uh, favoring the Velama caste or of the BSP, they said they're not a Dalit party, they're a Jatav party. So these kinds of strategies are the kind of the first one. The second is uh, to uh, uh, accuse them of, of being, uh, second is to uh, focus on the fact that this party is a dynastic party, whereas the BJP is a non, at least at the top levels, a non-dynastic party. And the third is to make allegations of corruption. And so what I say in the article is that all of these three strategies, you know, Muslim appeasement or uh, saying that you're a party of a specific caste group, dynasty and corruption, they, it's, it's not been easy for them to apply this, these three strategies. These are the three. There are no... Okay. These are the three. So, 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 so Kesha, let's yeah. take up each of these points yeah. one by yeah. one. So, yeah, so let's sure. talk about the alleged, you know, sort of appeasement of a certain community or, or Muslims or whatever. So let's focus on that for the time. Yeah. And, and let's say that, yes, Arvind K. G. Wan, it's often pointed out, never went to Shahid Bagh where yes. there were protests against the Citizenship Amendment Act or uh, the, the, the National Register of Citizens. Yes. He, maybe some of his colleagues, some of the other ministers in his government, he didn't go to Northeast Delhi after there were riots in, in, in early 2020, 
uh, in, in early um, uh, 2020, that's correct. It's in early 2020, you know, uh, uh, around the time, time Donald Trump uh, visited Delhi. Uh, yes, Arvind Kejriwal can recite the Hanuman Chalisa. I mean, okay, it's not just in visiting temples or organizing tours of these uh, uh, Hindu religious uh, uh, places. Uh, that's not all. At the same time, Arvind K. G. Wal sort of uses it selectively. I'll give you one example. When there was a hue and cry about this film, Kashmir Files, he, he took them on. Yes. And he said, why are you asking the Delhi government to give you entertainment tax exemption? You want more people to see Kashmir Files? Put it up on YouTube. Let everybody have, uh, you know, watch it. So when it comes to this whole issue of Muslim appeasement, yeah, Arvind Kejriwal plays in both ways, isn't it? That's right. And, and, and I remember uh, right after they had won in Punjab, I remember the speech that he gave uh, right after they had won in Punjab and where he said that I don't do politics of Nafrat, I do politics of PR. And that's Ra Ra Rahul Gandhi sometimes talks like that. But I think Kashmir Files is one of the only cases where he very directly took on the BJP uh, on this issue. I think that you, it's very important to remember that Arvind Kejriwal was a open supporter of the government's uh, revocation of Article 370 and 35. Absolutely correct. And was basically uh, silent on all issues to do with Ayodhya. So uh, he, and now, I guess the real question is, does all this mean, to come back to our, the point about the B team, you know, uh, does this mean that he's actually a Nutva person? Is he a, a experienced politician? So my impression is, uh, from you know, you know, having lived for many years in Delhi under under this AAP government, is that their approach to these issues is to a try to avoid risk. They 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 they're a party that looks to see how can we avoid getting ourselves into trouble. And the second is that they have a very very robust, uh, at least in Delhi, a very very robust system of understanding what you might call the sentiment on the ground. Now. You see, it's a two-way thing because parties also have the ability to shape the sentiment on the ground. But I think the ARP is essentially trying to see and find out in real time what do voters think about something and then respond, as opposed to a party with a strong ideology. That so, so, uh, in, fact, in fact, the phrase that you have used is that it seems to be devoid of ideology. It, 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 I mean, I mean it, at it, one it, level, it's, it's sometimes with the so-called Jolawala socialists or leftists, uh, and on other occasions, he's with the diehard pro-economic liberalization yeah, yeah, sort of, yeah. you know, you, you want to start courses in entrepreneurship, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, in fact, Prashant Bhushan yeah. and Yogendra Yadav, who were once a part of not just the India Against Corruption movement, but also with the Ahmadmi Party, who parted ways with him, they accuse him of being no different from any of the opportunistic political parties he opposes yeah. from time to time. Well, that, it's, very, it's very interesting that you bring them up because, you know, of course, now at least Yogendra Yadav I know is participating in Rahul Gandhi's Bharat Jodo Yatra, which is quite a, a turn of events, you know, given both his India Against Corruption legacy as well as the fact that three years ago, he wrote an article saying that the country needs the Congress to disappear and that we won't move for the opposition can't move forward unless the Congress disappears. I think... Uh, what that illustrates, Panjwa, is just again that in politics everything is contingent, and today someone is your enemy, and tomorrow they. they, they <laughs> no they, permanent they, friends, no permanent enemies. But I just want to say one, uh, one, just, just on this, uh, to, to, on the on the point of ideology and Muslim appeasement. See, there are, AAP both gains and loses from this because, AAP as a, AAP really does not have credibility among minority voters as a party that will be a defender of India's pluralist, secular constitution and, uh, such shall we say, social and political tradition. So in both the 2017 and 2019 elections, I think Kejriwal quite openly felt said that he felt that Muslim voters at the last minute had moved to the Congress. And he framed this as kind of a betrayal, but I think the reality is that that's because AAP had not been able to establish that credibility. I mean, you, you could argue that Ahmadi Party took uh, the Muslim voters almost for granted. Then, you know, I, I don't have to go to Shaheen Bagh. I don't have to go to Northeast Delhi. You're anyway going to vote for me. Yeah. And I think that they, I think now they feel that because the Congress is all but wiped out in Delhi, most voters have no other choice. Okay. 
will have to be, will vote for them by default. Okay, uh, let's move quickly to the the second issue on family domination, parivar vaad. Yeah. As you rightly pointed out, yeah, neither yeah. Modi, uh, you know, Modi can take on the Congress on the whole issue of dynasty, but he can't take on the Ahmadi Party. So you know that that is one thing. I mean, so so from time to time, somebody I mean from the Ahmadi Party will take a pot shot. We'll take a pot shot at an oligarch or, you know, say, okay, here is Jay Shah, uh, you know, yeah, Amit yeah. Shah's son, you know, sitting on a pile of cash as, as, as the head of the India, India Premier League and so on and so forth. So this, again, a somewhat, uh, you know, you pick and choose the issue depending on what suits you. Yeah. So, but, the, but, the, but the dynasty point, I think, is, 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 is a very important one. It, I think brief history history lesson is 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 is, is, is you know is in order. Look, uh, dynasty really starts when Indira Gandhi brings Sanjay Gandhi into the Congress. Uh, not in the, not one minute. Not when Pandit Nehru brings Indira yeah, Gandhi. Yeah. Okay. That's a good point. So so, so I, uh, yeah. So, so the, the reason that I say this is because look, Motilal Nehru was president of the Congress. Jawaharlal Nehru was president of the Congress. Indira Gandhi was president of the Congress. But when Pandit Nehru died, he was not succeeded by Indira Gandhi. Was succeeded by Lal Bahadur Shastri. By Lal Bahadur Shastri, and yes, Shastri brought uh, Indira into his cabinet, uh, but there was, but there was, there was no call for Nehru to be succeeded by Indira Gandhi. There's absolutely no evidence that Nehru wanted to be succeeded by Indira Gandhi. Indira Gandhi, by contrast, brought Sanjay Gandhi, who was uh, twenty-three or twenty-four years old, while she had been, you know, uh, almost fifty when she when she when she became prime minister. She brought him into politics. She gave him when he, before he held any political office, a huge amount of power, and it was very clear that he was going to be her successor. And then when he died in, uh, you know, his uh, in a in a plane crash, she then brought uh, the other son Rajiv into politics. And when when she died, there was no question that anybody else would succeed her. So after she did this, party after party across India established the principle of dynastic succession: the Akali Dal, the TMK, the I mean, you, you, can, you can name many of the regional parties, the Samajwadi Party. The yeah. uh, you can even accuse the Trinamool Congress of not being very different. Exactly, exactly, and the, the other Biju Janata Dal. Exactly. Well, no, the, no, no. I, I would slightly uh, agree with you there. The thing with the Biju Janata Dal is the fact that Naveen Patnaik has no children. Okay, uh, has allowed him to escape the usual opprobrium that. Okay. The dynastic party attracts. So people still see him as self-sacrificing. They think of him as someone who gave up a life uh, in Delhi or an international life to come and serve. You can talk about the Shiv Sena also. Exactly. And the key point here is that well, there's the two things that I think have to be said. The first is that dynastic. I call I call dynasticism an incurable disease. Once a party has become dynastic, it has never reversed. It has never happened in the history of Indian politics that a party that had become dynastic reversed and went back to being non-dynastic. The second thing is, as far as the voter is concerned, and this is really important because people keep saying, what about Jay Shah? What about Anurag Thakur? You know, voters care about the top of the party. They are not looking at whether an individual MLA or MP is the son of an, another MLA or MP. They are asking, on what basis is the top job of the party? Okay, all right. So I, I think you made uh, an important point. Let's quickly move on in yeah. the interest of time to look at yeah. the third point you made on the yeah. issue of corruption. Yeah. You refer to how Jalalitha's popularity was apparently not dented, yeah. despite the yeah. fact that she was prosecuted and actually jailed yeah, uh, she was convicted. for corrupt yeah. practices. You yeah. start your article in NDTV.com by saying, you know, in 2015 on the eve of elections, you know, the BJP talked about Hawala at midnight and the then uh, Minister of State for Commerce, Nirmala Sita Raman, our present finance minister, accused the Alam Admi Party of laundering, you know, huge sums of money, humongous sums of money, uh, Arvind K. of being a so-called chore. Finally, the Alam Admi Party won 167 out of the 70 seats in Delhi and the BJP didn't talk about this again. Oh, every now and then they talk. Now the new issue again. The so-called liquor or whatever excise duty or liquor scandal. Now, there's a counter attack. Manish Sodia says, "Oh, they really they didn't find anything." Uh, Prime Minister Modi's department's enforcement directorate didn't get these guys raided me. What did they get? Nothing. And and then they sort of counter attack. 
Anvind Kejriwal says, you know, the Bharatiya Janta Party has spent, uh, you know, has bought over 270 MLAs in Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, Goa, Manipur, Meghalaya, uh, Arunachal, Maharashtra, etc., etc., etc. And if you assume he spent 20 crore on buying each MLA, he would have spent 5,500 uh, 5, for, sorry, 5,400 crore. That's a direct attack. Yeah. So this issue of corruption as an issue, as a political issue, your thoughts? So what matters with corruption is not whether you are corrupt, but two other things. The first is whether people perceive you to be corrupt. And the second is how they feel about you. So. If I, let's take the example of the current, current government. Uh, the, if you look at the scheme like electoral bonds and electoral bonds, it should, it should be said, the opposition parties don't oppose with any energy. And my suspicion is if an opposition government came to power, I don't think they would scrap electoral bonds. <laughs> That's quite a cynical view. We have to wait and watch. Because, because if you look at the way the opposition talks, especially the Congress, they just complain about how, how few electoral bonds they get. They don't, they don't really attack the scheme as a whole. And I think the reason, to, I mean, you know, I've, so, voters, it is, and in 2019, Rahul Gandhi's whole campaign was predicated on the approach that I want to reverse this situation where Mr. Modi is perceived to be honest and my party is perceived to be corrupt. And going all the way back to Bofors. Yeah, and, and eventually we know what happened. Chokidar Chor hai, Ham Chokidar, Rafael Deal, etc. etc. And the point there was that voters were not, did not find Rahul Gandhi to be a credible messenger for that message. So uh, who the credible messenger would be is another question. But if, if Rahul Gandhi was saying that Modi is a Chor, voters weren't buying it. And the point there is it's very, very difficult to just accusing someone of corruption is not going to lead voters right. to decide they're corrupt. So you are here saying that similarly, BJP by merely accusing Arvind yes. Kejriwal and Manish Sisodia to be chores again may not have much of an impact, which really brings me to uh, the, the next part of what I was saying, you know, this huge hue and cry uh, about free bees. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, in Uttar Pradesh, you give uh, rations, you give yeah, yeah. Uh, wheat, and you give uh, chana ka dal, chickpeas. You you transfer money to the bank account. You build toilets. You give cooking gas cylinders, and still the prime minister talks about the rarey culture. Yeah, yeah. Now, here again, we see the fact: the Aadmi Party says on the healthcare front. On the education front, we've done great work. One same thing happens. You see, okay, your Mahalla clinics, uh, your government schools, which are today supposed to be better than yeah. public schools in the national capital. And when the New York Times writes a detailed article, the BJP says it's paid news to the extent where the New York Times itself issues a kind of a, 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 a rejoinder saying, no, uh, we haven't been paid, uh, nobody's paid us to write this report kind of thing. And it all coincided. Front page of NYT and the raids on Manish Sisodia. Your thoughts? So I think this issue, this Ravdi issue is one where, firstly, I felt that for the first time that the BJP's heart didn't seem to be in what they were saying. So when the BJP goes after the Congress for corruption, when they go after the Congress for dynasty, when they go after the Congress for uh, Muslim appeasement, so to speak, when they go after the Congress for being a party of Khan market liberals, they really believe it. I mean, th these are these are not in just cynical political tactics. The, all the Everyone from the BJP leaders down to the BJP booth worker passionately believes in these arguments. And they, 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 that gives those arguments a certain force. And here with the, with the Ravdi, that force is not there. But look, at, I think here I have to say the, the AAP has you know, simply outplayed the BJP. Because instead of, if, imagine if it was the other way around. The BJP's first approach is to accuse you of hypocrisy, what they call whataboutry. But Kejriwal didn't say, what about Ujwala, is that a, free, a freebie? What about PM Kisan, is that a freebie? What about rations, are those freebies? Instead, he talked about his own popular schemes. He said, is education a freebie? Are Mohalla clinics 
freebies our you know buses freebies and it because his work is at least because on on those issues his work is popular it actually allowed him to take control of of the narrative and uh, it's a uh, i think it's just another sign that the bjp is is still looking for that message what is that anti arc message that is really going to work the reality thing to me shows that they haven't found it yet okay so so really uh, two last questions to you yeah. um what do you see the near term or even the long term future of the aam aadmi party i mean yes in gujarat it certainly wants to replace replace uh the congress as the principal opposition party if not come to power of course these are things they will never say publicly but that's the expectation you see the aap having failed to you know expand its footprint in goa uh, way back if you go back to 2014 arvind kejriwal was a man in a hurry he went he was all over he even contested against uh, the prime minister against mr narendra modi from banaras and he didn't make I mean, he didn't he didn't get very far whether in your own state of karnataka aap has uh, you know tried to expand its footprint in maharashtra everywhere and not succeeded maybe we would agree uh, they were premature etc etc so how do you see the near term uh, and the medium term future of the aam aadmi party that's my penultimate yes. question yes so i would have directly answered but i think just to uh, add to what you say in the question i think it should also be uh, remembered that the aam aadmi party whether by its own intention or whether by the is a consequence of the way it does its business is not a part of this broader anti modi opposition coalition the rest of the opposition is very suspicious of the aam aadmi party because they think of it as being a bjp type party that has the aspiration to eat into their vote shares and eventually replace them and the bjp is equally you know yes. what are both suspicious or some would say even what it The, the BJP and the AAP are the two parties in India that have no genuine friends. I mean, the BJP had two long-standing alliances with the Akali Dal and the Shiv Sena, and they've managed to break or lose both, and with the JDU as well. And so and, 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 and Arvind Kejriwal supported the farmers' agitation. Yes, yeah, exactly. And so, and done incredibly well in in Punjab, better than its own expectations. Exactly. So, in terms of the the future of AAP, well, the reasons to be skeptical. AAP has. current is a party with zero lok sabha seats so that's you know let's remember remember exactly what we're talking about here it's a party that's up against a, the the bjp is a social movement going back to the 1920s it's a political party attached to a social movement like the congress used to be the rss is going to be 100 years old in 2025 exactly exactly and here you have a movement that really started in 2011 2012 in the form of india against corruption and then the aam aadmi party the bjp is a truly pan india party aap really is not you could also perhaps let's see but one could perhaps raise some uh, uh, a certain concerns about the aap tactics you know because for example they have chosen to emphasize gujarat rather than himachal or or previously uttarakhand they are also in himachal maybe not emphasize of course of course but if you look at where arvind kejriwal is spending his time he's looking at gujarat as being a place and, and in gujarat in fact the day after manish sodia was raided he he, he and uh, arvind kejriwal campaigned in gujarat exactly and the aap's ambition in gujarat it appears or the, the the summit of the ambitions in this election is to come second not to come first the idea is can you displace the congress and can you become, emerge as a second largest party in 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 gujarat but i think the reasons on the other hand to be optimistic about aap or aap's prospects are the first is uh or kon hai you know it's just uh, the he's the only person who has the only party that is showing the ambition to go national is is is, is aap and uh, as long as, I, i think look is there any evidence that the congress is going to reverse the trend the trend of uh of recent decades because you go back to indira gandhi's death in 1984 It is a it is a straight line trend of secular decline for the Congress. Their vote share has fallen in all. With, with the exception of 1984. Exactly, exactly. So with the uh, which is really a, which is a, a election shaped by Indira Gandhi's death. After that, 89, 91, 96, all the way to 2019, you are seeing the Congress slipping back at every election. 2009 is the one little moment where they the vote share temporarily goes up. Uh, but yeah, yeah, two thousand four, two thousand nine, the UPA. Yeah, well, even in two thousand four, it was more a case of stitching together alliances. I mean, the Congress only had one hundred and forty-five. That's correct. 
that's correct so aap the is is you know that there is a vacuum and look the bjp is not the party that it was 10 years ago because india is a young country i am you know i am 31 and i am actually probably older than the average indian because india is a the, the median age of uh, india is, is supposed to be some people say 27 some people say 26 exactly exactly right so, so i mean we by now we are supposed to have overtaken china exactly and that means that uh, hundreds of mil- a majority of indians have only really known mr in their whole adult life they've only really known prime minister modi so if you look at something like the agni pat protest against the agni pat scheme what they tell you is that the bjp is not the insurgent anymore it's the establishment when people think of sarkar or pradhan mantri they think of bjp and narendra modi it's the new party of government and that means that you have to own the consequences of your of your governance and politic gravity in politics always applies no one's popularity is, is permanent even pandit nehru was popularity get faded by the end of his life and uh, once there is if one eventually that discontent is, is directed at the government and that is i suppose what arvind kejriwal is counting on that you know he builds up his party and and when the voters want to change he will be the only person who is providing them with that option okay keshav we've run out of time this is positively my last question and a personal one Yes, you are just thirty-one years old. You have been interviewed on your book, which is Accidental Magic in two thousand nineteen. You interviewed people, but uh, I presume this is one of the first times, or perhaps the first time, that you are being interviewed on the political situation. When are you going to follow in your father's footsteps and write a book of non-fiction? I know you are going to write. uh um i know you're going to write uh, you have another book of fiction happening but uh, uh when will my my friend uh, ram guha san who write something on history or contemporary politics can we expect that yeah i i don't know i mean my yeah we both write but i think very different uh, probably very different books and and and, and you know uh, fiction is really my main thing but uh, we'll see i mean nothing 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 immediate nothing immediately planned uh on that front okay. but uh, we'll keep writing keep writing articles thank you so much keshav on behalf of all of the viewers of news click news click all those who heard you and watched you thank you very much for giving us your time from the united kingdom uh, early in the morning for you when we are recording this program um, and um, for the viewers of news click that was keshav guha evaluating the working of the aam aadmi party so you keep watching news click subscribe to this channel to this channel become a subscriber of news click yes do support independent journalism there's too much of the media in india which is godi media to use ravish kumar's famous word support independent journalism keep watching news click thank you very much for being with us